Our economy has made a complete shift in 2023. In 2020 and 2021, our economy was booming with low interest rates and lots of free money from the government. In 2022, we started the year off with the economy booming with low interest rates. And then by the end of the year, things started to shift because interest rates were going up and we started to see layoffs. Now, here we are in 2023. We're starting the year off with higher interest rates. We're already seeing a slowdown in the economy and we're seeing an increase in layoffs. 2020, 2021, and even into 2022 were boom years, even though technically we were in a recession in 2020 and part of 2021, but it looks like it peaked in 2022 and now everyone's trying to figure out where 2023 is going to go. As an investor, there's opportunities in every market. You just have to know where to look. That's why this year there are five things that I want you to start doing right now. That way, even if the economy is going crazy, your bank account can keep growing. Number one is build a longer term investment horizon. I talk about investing a lot on this channel and I always say that there's two different ways that you can invest your money. Number one is you can be a passive investor where every week or every month you're just consistently, automatically and passively putting your money into the market and you're going to let the market do its thing. And number two is you're being an active investor where you're looking for a good valued investment, whether it's stocks, real estate, a business, whatever it might be. And then you're going to put your money into this thing and you want to hold on to it for the long term. The key for both of these to work is the long term aspect. How much time are you going to put your money in the market for? Because now what I see happen here on YouTube is anytime you see one of the big down days in the markets, people get very angry. They talk about how they lost 20% in the market, how they can't trust the stock market, how they can't trust anything, how investing is a scam, why you shouldn't be putting money into the market when it's down. When in reality, we're just talking about what's happening in a short period of time. These day-to-day -day swings for long-term investors really don't matter. If anything, when you see big down movements in the markets, that creates better buying opportunities for you. Now, understanding where we are in the economic cycle, if things continue to go down, well, that means the markets would also probably continue to go down. We really haven't seen that big of a drop off of our highs in 2021 and even into 2022. I mean, things can go way worse. If you look at previous economic crashes, we saw the stock market go much lower in 2008. We saw dot-com companies get even harder in 2000 and 2001. So now, you as an investor, what does this mean? Well, for one, you got to be patient, but number two, you have to have a long-term investment horizon if you really want to be an investor. I don't know how to trade. I'm not a trader and I don't advocate trading. To me, trading is gambling because I don't know how to do it. For me, I'm an investor. So what does that mean? What's happening in day-to-day -day in 2023 and 2024, if it's up or down, it doesn't really change anything. I'm still looking for good opportunities to buy individual companies, to buy real estate, to buy other investments. And I consistently have my passive investments set up. In the stock market, every Wednesday, I have money that's leaving my account and it's automatically invested. This system doesn't change if the market is up or down. It just keeps happening every single week. You don't touch these systems based off of what's happening in the markets because you have the long-term investment horizon. In 10 years, you are going to see a whole new wave of millionaires come out of whatever happens in this decade. Now, you got to decide, are you going to be one of the people that makes the millionaires because you sold your investments at a big loss and somebody else was able to buy the investment at a discounted price? Or are you going to be one of the people that becomes a millionaire? Now, in order for you to become a millionaire, you got to understand it's not something that happens overnight. This is a long-term game because investing is not something you do for six months. It's not something you do for a year. We're talking about years and decades. And so if that's the game that you're trying to play, you can't be so worried about day-to-day -day swings and you have to understand that you're investing in good value investments for the long term. Number two, get some doomsday insurance. We have insurance for everything. You have health insurance, car insurance, home insurance. People got insurance for the laptops and their phones. But how about your finances? Now, no insurance company is going to sell you insurance on your finances, at least that I know of, but you can consider using your money in a way that you can buy some insurance for yourself for your own protection. What I do for myself is I buy physical gold every single month. Now, I'm not here telling you what to do. I'm just telling you what I do. So hopefully you can build some insurance for yourself. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this. But for me, I buy physical gold because for me, that gold provides insurance. Now, gold is not an investment for me. I look at gold as an additional way for me to save money. It's a way
away from me to save hard money because the advantage with gold for me is that it takes time, effort, and labor to mine physical gold. So that value is stored through the physical gold. You can compare that to our paper dollars, our currency, which is a very good exchange of money because it's very easy to buy something with money, but our paper dollars don't store value very well because of inflation. It's very easy to print more money, so $100 today loses value each and every day. So the way that I look at it is if I had $10,000 worth of cash and $10,000 worth of physical gold, and I buried both of these in my backyard, and then I went and dug them both up in 10 years or 50 years, which one of these two things is going to have more buying power, the gold or the physical cash? Well, I think it's going to be the physical gold because as our paper dollars lose value to inflation, gold should maintain some of its value. It's not that the gold becomes more valuable, it's that the currency that's being used to buy the gold is going down in value. That's why I buy gold. Now for me, gold isn't a huge piece of my investment portfolio. It's about 2% of my entire investment portfolio. But for me, it's a little bit of insurance, it's protection, it's doomsday scenario. I don't really care about what's happening with the price of gold, whether it's going up or down. I don't monitor the price of gold every single day like that. I just have a system, there's apps out there, I have one that's in the description, it's an affiliate product of mine, it's the one that I use, where I just set that up and I buy some physical gold every single month. Now if you use Use our affiliate company is called vaulted we will get compensated so just understand that do your own research there's other companies out there I don't want you to just use it because I say it I want you to use it because you like it do your own research I'm just giving it to you as a resource but for me it's a system where now I buy gold every single month and now I own this physical gold. Number three is build your savings cushion. And there's two reasons why you want to work to build your savings cushion right now. Number one is because they want it to protect you against an emergency in case you lose your job, in case the economy slows down even more, in case your income goes down. You have savings to protect you, that way you don't have to go into debt in case you lose your job. On the other hand, you want to have some savings that way you can take advantage of opportunities that might come your way. Because if we continue to see an economic slowdown, if we continue to see the economy hurt, if we continue to see interest rates rise, it's going to put downward pressure on asset prices. Things like businesses, stocks, real estates. And that creates opportunity then for you or people who have money to go out and buy some of these investments at a discounted price when everybody else is running away trying to cash out. But in order for you to be able to buy these, you need some cash in your pocket. Now, the nice thing about today's day and age is at least you can get some sort of return on your cash. It's still less than inflation, but if you open a high interest savings account, there's a bunch of them out there. Some of them at the time of recording this video are paying somewhere between three and a quarter and almost three and three quarters percent interest a year on your savings. These are savings accounts that are paying you three some percent in interest on your savings just for keeping your cash there. It's not a CD, you don't have to tie up your money, it's just the interest rate on your savings account. So if you want to learn more about that, just go to Google and search high interest savings accounts. Number four is build some automatic investments. For 90% of people, passive investing is the way to go. Everybody thinks that the way that you invest your money is you got to find the next Tesla stock, you got to find the next Amazon stock before it pops off, that way you can get rich. But for most people who try to do that, you end up losing money. Because for one, you don't know how to find a good stock, you don't know how to research a good stock, and then you buy a stock and then you sell it for a huge loss. Why? Because you don't have the psychology to invest. You don't understand how to read the financials of a company. You don't know how to value a company. Now, this isn't to say that you can't, but most people won't. For the majority of people, if you want to make money in the market, if you want to make money from your investments over the long term, the best way to do that is just to passively invest your money. Create a portfolio of ETFs. You can look at ETFs that give you exposure to the S&P 500, the biggest 500 companies in the stock market. You can look at ETFs that give you exposure to the entire stock market. You can look at ETFs that give you exposure to tech stocks. You can look at ETFs that give you exposure to healthcare stocks. You can look at ETFs that give you exposure to countries around the world. Now, all you have to do is invest your money into this fund, and this fund gives you exposure to a whole basket full of stocks. Now, you don't have to find the perfect company, you just got to figure out what sectors you want to invest in, then you set up a system where every week, every two weeks, or every month, you're going to automatically pull some cash out of your checking account and invest it into these ETFs. You turn it on and you don't think about it and you let this happen for years 
and you let the market do its thing. Yes, yeah, sometimes you're going to see the market up and you're going to pay a lot of money to buy some of these ETFs. Sometimes you're going to see the market go down and you're going to get a better deal on these ETFs. But the whole idea here is you're going to consistently keep investing your money to build the portfolio, but then over the long term, if the market continues to grow, which it always has done over the last 100 years, we've seen recessions, we've seen crashes, but we've also seen booms, and the market is much higher now than after the previous recession. So if history is any indication for the future and the market and our economy continues to grow, that means in 5, 10, 15 years, you will see more wealth then than you will have now and your money will continue to grow. But this requires you to turn it on, set it up and let it do its thing and not sell out of panic and not turn it off because you're worried about where the market is going. Remember the first thing that I said, you have to have the long-term investment horizon that way you can just let your money do its thing. Now, if you want to stay up to date on what is happening, that way you could be a more educated investor. This is why I created Market Briefs, which is my free financial newsletter. It's a super simple and easy way for you to stay up to date on what's happening in the financial markets. You can read the email and rest in five minutes every morning. So if you want to join Market Briefs, it's completely free. And I'll put the link to how you can join Market Briefs down in the description below. And number five is need less stuff. For the last couple of months, I've been thinking about buying a new pickup truck and I've been debating between the Ram TRX and the Ford Raptor and I was getting ready to buy a brand new one of these. It was going to cost me a little bit over $100,000. I was going to pay for it in cash. But then I thought about where we are in this economic cycle. And I really started to think, where am I going to get the best return on this $100,000 and do I need this truck right now? Yeah, I do want something nicer, I want something newer, which I can get a whole lot cheaper than $100,000, some thousand dollars. But based off of where we are in this economic cycle, I'd rather use that money right now to invest, to really solidify and build my wealth even more. So I'm going to take it one more economic cycle. I'm going to go through this economic cycle where I spend less money, that way we have more money to invest because I think that we're going to see more opportunities come up. And the worst thing that could happen is I look at my truck and I say, man, I wish I could have bought more of this stock or this real estate or bought this other business because, well, I would have had the cash to do so, but I wanted to buy this brand new pickup truck. And so I want to really focus in on building more assets, buying more things that make me money than buying things that make me look like I have money. Look, I can't tell you what to do, but I'll tell you what I do. I make good money but I've been driving around in a beat down car because I don't want to spend money on myself until I own more assets. I've been stacking assets, buying real estate, making my investments in the stock market, investing in startups, investing in my own business, building these assets. And now, you know what? I was at a point where I can go and buy whatever car I want and not really have it affect me financially. But here we are in this weird stage in this economic cycle. And I'm like, you know what? We'll take it a little bit further. Let's stack some more assets and then once this economic cycle heads into a different course, then I can start spending a little bit more money on myself. And so what does that mean for you? Whether it's your car, the way you live, the way you spend money on clothes, the way you spend money on trips, there are places where you can cut back where if you just need a little bit less, you can have some more money, but you got to do it with a purpose. Where are you going to put this money? Are you going to invest this money that way it can make you more money or are you just going to have it sit there for no other purpose? you got to understand why you're doing things, but as long as you have a reason for why you're doing it, it's going to be a lot easier for you to do it. The average stock market return is 7 to 10% a year. Why are you trying to invest your money in the stock market and get a 7 to 10% return a year when you could get a 15 to 25% return by paying down your credit card debt? Step number three is you gotta start putting your money to work. See, what wealthy people do is they create a system where anytime they earn money,